In this lesson, we're gonna learn about a really powerful bubble feature that's gonna let us do the following. So let's say we've got a workflow here and a workflow has, let's say this is one action inside of our workflow. And after action number one, there's another action and even maybe another action. And what we have is a number of items from our database. So in our case, let's say we've got a bunch of diary entries. And what we wanna do is we want to run this workflow for every diary entry that we have. So let's say for each one, you know, maybe this first one is we're going to delete the associated file, the associated photo with a diary entry. In the next action, we're going to delete the entry itself and then in the third one, let's just do something kind of arbitrary. Just we're going to send an email. It doesn't really matter what we, what we do here. The point is that if we've got three diary entries, we want this workflow to run for each of them. So you can think of this workflow as sort of like a conveyor belt in a factory. And it's going to take as an input one of these diary entries. We're going to feed that diary entry through. And these actions then are going to run one after the other. The diary entry is discarded. We take the next one and that's gonna go through. We take the next one and that's gonna go through. So the point here is we've defined this one workflow, but it's going to run three times, one time for each of our diary entries. And this sort of thing is helpful in so many different situations. You know, let's say it's in, you're an e-commerce site. Your users just placed an order. Maybe you wanna send an individual email for each of the items in the user's cart with an invoice for that item. Or maybe you're a CRM and you're allowing a user to batch update contacts in your database. These are all situations in which scheduling a workflow to happen for each data item that you feed to that workflow can be really, really helpful. So let's see how this works in practice. So the first thing that we wanna do is within our backend workflows tab, we're gonna create a new backend workflow, which is going to be the conveyor belt, right? This is gonna be the workflow that we're going to feed multiple data entries into. So it's going to be an API workflow. And in our case, we're gonna call this delete diary entry. And just like in the previous lesson, we don't need to worry about any of these other checkboxes. All we need to do is we now need to add a parameter that's gonna accept the data type that we're gonna run this workflow on or run this workflow over is one way of saying it. So in our case, that's going to be a diary entry, okay? Of type, of course, diary entry. And then what we do within this workflow is we add all of the actions that we want to happen to any diary entry that we feed into the workflow. So the first one of these might be to delete an uploaded file because that is what is then gonna allow us to clear out unused files or files that are associated with diary entries that have been deleted. So the file URL, that actually is gonna come from the diary entry that we're passing in here. Okay, so I'm gonna set this file URL to be the diary entries image and this is exactly the same thing as doing images url okay we're going to achieve the same end result here and then this isn't the only thing that we want to do we also want to delete the diary entry itself so this is why we're going to go down to delete a thing and delete that diary entry and we could of course as we did in the previous lesson just delete a list of diary entries but that's not going to allow us to delete the uploaded file for each of those diary entries. So that's precisely the reason why we're gonna set this up as a workflow that we're gonna run for each diary entry. Now, let's remind ourselves of the overall workflow here. The user hits delete account from the account page. They're gonna see this confirmation screen. The confirmation screen is gonna show a button which when the user taps this, is gonna do a bunch of different things that we set up in the previous lesson. Most important for us is, We've got this workflow here to schedule this API workflow, delete user account. And if we go into that, which we can do by just hitting this little button here, then we're doing these actions that we set up in the previous lesson. However, now we actually don't want to delete a list of diary entries. So I'm gonna remove this action. What we want is for this workflow to actually schedule our other workflow. So in effect, 
we've got one backend workflow here, which is going to schedule or trigger another backend workflow, but it's not just gonna schedule it or trigger it once, it's gonna trigger it multiple times, once for each diary entry that we pass into it. So to do that, to trigger it multiple times, one time for every data thing that we pass into it, we use this action here. Schedule an API workflow on a list. And for this to work, we specify first, what is the type of thing that we're gonna pass into this API or this backend workflow? So in our case, that's a diary entry. Then we specify which specific diary entries do you want us to run this workflow over? So in other words, which diary entries are we passing through this convey about, right? Are we passing into this workflow? And in our case, that's going to be all of the diary entries that are associated with the user or have been created by the user. So we're going to do a search for all diary entries where that created by field is equal to the current user. This is exactly the same search constraint that we had set up before when we were deleting a list of diary entries. And then we select which workflow do you want to run for each diary entry that is returned by this search expression. And we've got two that we can choose from here. This is the only one that makes sense. This is the one that we just set up, delete diary entry. And in this little box here, this can be quite confusing for people. We only have to put in here this diary entry. So what that is saying is that we're going to run this delete diary entry API workflow one time for each individual diary entry returned by this search expression. And then since we're running the workflow, it has this parameter that we've configured called diary entry. And I, to make this even more obvious, I can call it diary entry to delete. What that will mean is that when we're triggering this backend workflow, we need to specify for each run, each time that this workflow delete diary entry is going to run, which diary entry do you want to pass in as this parameter? And when we choose here, this diary entry, we're going to run it one time for each of the diary entries returned by this search. So let's say there's 10 diary entries. And all this is saying, the diary entry to delete is saying that when the first time that this workflow runs, take the first diary entry in that list of diary entries and pass it in to the workflow. And the second time, pass the next one in. And the third time, pass the third one in. And the fourth time, the fourth diary entry, and so on and so on. And then just like any other backend workflow, we're going to choose when we're going to schedule this. So we may as well do this right away. And then we can also specify a number of seconds that is going to be placed between each run of this workflow. So if we had here one second, then for the first run of this workflow, it would run and then it would wait one second and then it would run again for the next item in this search for diary entries. And then it would run and then it would wait a second and then it would run again for the third item in this list of diary entries and, and so on and so on. Now, when we actually leave this empty, Bubble is going to just run this workflow over all of these diary entries in a few milliseconds. It's going to happen really, really quickly. And so in most cases, we're going to leave this blank. Now to test this out, I've created a couple of sample trips, each with some images. And you can see those diary entries here and the associated images are here within my file manager. And so what we should expect is that if I go and delete this user's account, that these images should be removed from my file manager and the diary entries should be removed. And that's all going to happen because we're scheduling this API workflow to run for each of the diary entries. And oh, good thing I checked when we changed the key name here for the parameter we actually broke the connection here so this is actually the diary entry to delete image url and the diary entry to delete is the diary entry that we're going 
to, of course, delete. So good thing I checked that. The last thing that we have to do just while we're testing is actually just remove this 24 hours. I wanna be able to test that this happens right away so we can add these hours back afterwards. But just while we're testing, let's see whether we actually delete all the user's data immediately. And so now if I go to delete this user's account, I'm navigated to the home page. And if we check our database here, well, the user has gone. The user was map plus to delete, so that's gone. What about the trips by that user? They seem to be gone. The diary entries seem to be gone. And what about those images? There they all are. But if I hit here to refresh my file manager, you see that they all just disappeared. So this all seemed to work perfectly. Of course, we need to add back that 24 hour period here, but otherwise this is all working perfectly. So this is how to schedule a workflow over a list of things. Very, very versatile and powerful feature in Bubble. Now, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about everybody's favorite topic, which is workload. And this is really closely related to the running costs for your application. So we'll talk all about that in the next lesson.